Prof and today I'm going to show you a video on indices or powers. I do have another video on this so you might want to have a look at that first because it includes some of the easier rules like when you're adding and subtracting the powers and when you're multiplying them. In this video I'm going to concentrate on negative powers and powers that are fractions. So when you see a negative power, you need to remember to turn the letter or the number into a fraction. And when you see powers that are fractions, you need to remember it means rooting, like square rooting and cube rooting. And this one here, which is also a fraction, it's rooting, but then also squaring and cubing afterwards. So it might look a little bit confusing like this to begin with, but once you've seen some real examples with real numbers, hopefully it'll, it'll make a bit more sense. So I'm going to do these questions without a calculator. Okay, so the first one, it's a negative power. So remember, if you see a negative power, you need to put that number into a fraction. So number one is written over the number four, just like in this example here. Remember, when this number goes underneath, so it becomes the denominator, that power there changes to a positive power. So it's just four to the positive one which is the same as just one quarter, because four to the power of one is just four. Now, in the next one, it's a little bit harder. This time, we write the number nine as the denominator, but this power changes to a positive two. And this one, we can evaluate. We know what nine squared is. It's nine times nine, which is 81. So it's one over 81. So just remember, negative powers, turn them into fractions. When they turn into fractions, that power is no longer negative. So then you can evaluate. All right, on to the next one. So now we've already got a fraction. So if that happens, this negative power turns the fraction upside down. So this one will become two over one. And remember, once you've done that switch, this power is no longer negative. So this would just be positive one. So two to the power of one is just two, and two, one to the power of one is just one, and two over one is just two, okay? So this one is just equal to two. Now, here again, we've got another fraction, so the negative power turns it upside down, so the three is now the numerator, and the two is the denominator. Remember, once you've made that switch, this power is no longer negative, so it becomes positive two. And now we can square both those numbers inside the brackets. So three squared is three times three, which is nine. And two squared is two times two, which is four. So there's the answer to that one. Now, onto a different rule. So this time we have a fraction. Remember, when you see a fraction, it means you're going to be rooting. So because this number is a two, it means we're going to be square rooting the number 16. Now, normally when we square root, we don't write that number two. It doesn't matter whether you write it or not. It's exactly the same thing. So if I square root this number, there are two solutions whenever you square root. We can have positive or negative four because four squared is 16 and minus four times minus four is also positive 16. Okay, onto a few more. top one we've got a denominator here of three so that means I'm going to be cube rooting the number eight so the cube root of number eight is two because two cubed is eight two times two times two is eight so that's the first one now here we're working out the fourth root of the number 16 okay because the denominator is four so the fourth root of 16 well that's also two because two to the power of four, two times two times two times two, is also 16. So I know these quite quickly, but you might not get them straight away to begin with, but the more practice you get, the quicker you'll get. All right, this one here is a combination of two of the rules. We've got the negative power and this power is a fraction as well. So because it's negative, remember that means you write the number as a fraction. So I write it as one over nine to the positive half. Remember this changes to a positive power when we turn it into a fraction. And if you see the power of a half, well that just means you're square rooting. 
So you have to square root the number 9. So the square root of 9, well that's 3, so my answer is 1 third. If they want another solution, then you can use negative 3 as well, because remember, when you square root the number 9, you get two answers, positive and negative. Now, here, we're looking at the last rule. So this fraction is square rooting, but then also squaring or cubing, raising to the power as well. So we take the denominators to start with, and this means we are square rooting. Remember, the denominator tells you how to root the number. So we're going to be square rooting the number 9. And afterwards, with that answer, we have to cube. Because the numerator is what you do at the end. So the square root of 9, well, again, there are two solutions, positive and negative 3. But I'm just going to take the positive one for this question. So the square root of 9 is 3. And when you cube that number, well, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Okay, so there's my final answer. All right, on to the last one. So again, it's a negative power. So that means you have to write that number as a fraction. So 1 over 4. And remember, the power is now positive 3 over 2, not negative. And the denominator of this power tells us how to root the number 4. So we're square rooting the number 4. So I'm going to write my square root of 4. And then outside the brackets, we put this power here. So we're going to cube that final answer. Well, the square root of 4, again, when you square root, you get two solutions. But I'm just going to use the positive value for this question. But if they want a second one, then you know what to do. You take the negative value. So the square root of 4 is positive 2. And then you're going to cube your answer. So 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. OK, I've got a few more challenge questions to finish. I've got a mixed number, so the first thing I need to do is change that mixed number into an improper fraction, a top-heavy fraction. So hopefully you know how to do that already. The denominator stays the same, and to find the numerator, you multiply 11 by 9, and then you add 1. So that gives us 100. So, the power is still the same. Now remember that negative turns the fraction upside down. Okay, so we've now got 9 over 100. And once you've done that switch, the power is no longer negative, so we've got positive a half. And hopefully by now you know that when you see a half, it means square rooting. So the square root of 9 over 100 is 3 over 10. Okay, so there's the final answer. So if you see a mixed number, turn it into an improper fraction first. Now, this one uses a rule that I covered in my previous video. When you see two powers, and there are brackets here, you have to multiply those powers together. So you're multiplying negative 6 by a third. Well, that is negative 2. So that gives us the new power. So we've got 10 to the power of minus 2. Now, the negative power turns this number into a fraction. So we've got 1 over 10. So that new power here is positive 2. Remember, the negative disappears once you make the switch. And 10 squared is just 10 times 10, which is 100. So we've got 1 over 100. There we go. And for the last one. So the top part, the numerator, we've got the square root of 9. Okay, so I'm going to do that first. And underneath, I'm just going to leave that as it is for the moment. And I'm going to work out what I get for the numerator. So the square root of 9 is just 3. And I've got this negative power underneath. Now, it's only the 4 that has a negative power. So it's only this number that moves. The 3 doesn't have a negative power, so the 3 stays where it is. So when that happens, what you need to do with these two numbers is multiply them together. Okay, so that 4 is now next to the 3. And remember, once it's made the move, the power is no longer negative. So now this is positive a half. Okay, so the only one that moves is the one with the negative power. Now, this 4 to the power of a half just means the square root. 
So the square root of 4, well that's 2, so 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, so there the power rules, the rules of indices. Practice squaring, cubing, cube rooting and square rooting to get really quick at these questions. And that's it, so bye bye for me.